Let's just open with a word of prayer. Father, we welcome your presence here with us today. Lead this message and release to our hearts everything you have for us. In Jesus' name. So today I just want to share a few things that have been on my heart the last few weeks. There are several things that happen in the spirit realm when we worship. And I just have a few of those things to share this morning that I feel the Lord has placed on my heart. So the title for my message this morning is Get Your Camo On and Worship. Jerry's probably laughing at me. Get your camo on. There's a reason why I'm wearing my camo hoodie today. Get your camo on and worship. Now, I had some fun with the PowerPoint this week. So I hope you can see it. It is camo up there. That's probably why you can't see it, right? (laughs) So get your camo on and worship. And like I was saying, I've been teasing Jerry just a little bit about my camo t-shirt. I've been saying that this is the new elder's uniform. But I didn't realize that it might be prophetic. Because last week, I heard the Holy Spirit say that he had given Citygate Church a new mantle. And it was a mantle of war. Now, by this, I mean contending, in the sense of contending. It is contending for change and contending for a a deeper level of worship. So this is not hunting camel. This is contending, contending camel. Now, in reference to the word change... Many have felt that we're moving from the old into the new. Change will bring righteousness and justice as we fully follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and God's kingdom agenda. As we contend to stay close to him, we can rest because in his presence is the fullness of joy. Psalm 1611. So in his presence is the fullness of joy, so we can rest in him when we stay close to him and follow his leading. But have we ever, have we always given our hearts fully to the kind of worship that Father is looking for? Let's just take a few moments now, let's just bow our heads and close our eyes. And I'm going to just say a quiet prayer in humility. It's going to be a prayer of repentance for any lukewarmness in any of our worship. So, Father, we confess that we have not always worshipped you in spirit and truth. We have not always given you the worship you deserve. Forgive us for missing the mark and for in any way being lukewarm. I ask that Holy Spirit would stir our hearts to bubble up in praise, bubble up in praise, bubble up in praise, and that Holy Spirit would release in us a spirit of worship and adoration to you. Let our worship exalt you, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So I felt the Holy Spirit had laid on my heart five reasons why he's putting his finger on worship right now. Karen started last week talking about worship, and and mine just builds on hers, and why we must contend for deeper worship, why we must press in for it. It says in Matthew 11, verse 12 from the Passion Translation, from the moment John stepped in, Onto the scene until now, the realm of heaven's kingdom is bursting forth, and passionate people have taken hold of its power. Passionate people, and Jerry talked about being passionate. 
Passionate people have taken hold of its power. So I want to address today five reasons why Holy Spirit is putting his finger on worship right now. First of all, worship stirs up and increases our faith. God wants us to know that worship can increase faith, which opens heavenly portals over us. Why do we need or want heavenly portals opened over us? Because it gives us access to the full provision of God in heavenly places. It makes available to us the full storehouse of the riches of our inheritance, our provision, our salvation, our health, our deliverance, our protection, and the abundance of God that Jesus has purchased for us. It displays to the world the glory and benefit of living in the kingdom. Are you glad you're living in the kingdom? Does it show on you? Romans 10, 17 says, and from the NIV translation, it says, Faith comes by hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. However, when we worship, Worship incorporates the essence of truth and the godly values and the principles of the word. And sometimes we even sing scripture. As we encounter his presence in worship, that too will build our faith. So that's the first point, is that worship increases faith. The second point, and Mac was talking about this this morning when he was sharing about the the worship practice. Worship brings us into the presence of God. The Lord wants us to see worship as a place where we can have a personal encounter, an experience to get to know him more. In worship and praise, our hearts travel through the tabernacle, from the outer court to the holy place, into the holy of holies. We can encounter his presence in worship, and those personal encounters can change us. Psalm 22.3 says, from the King James Version, God inhabits the praises of his people. And I love what it says in the Passion Translation. You are God, enthroned, surrounded with songs. I can't see that. Living... What does it say? What's that word? Shouts of praise of your princely people. So God is in our worship. He's in our praise. We can move from praises to God, for praises to God for his goodness and for what he has done for us, to a spirit of worship where we adore, exalt, And love him because he loves us. And Karen talked about that last week. She talked about God loving us in the worship. And then when the glory comes, stand in it. I finished reading a book by Ruth Ward Heflin. It's called Glory, Experiencing the Atmosphere of Heaven. And in her book, Ruth Heflin says... The more you declare his blessings, the more you have to declare. And the more you speak about his goodness, the more you have to speak. And one of the reasons, aside from the lockdown, that we've invited the the, um, older children to stay up in the service with us is we desire that you encounter God and experience the presence of God up here while you're with us in worship and in the service. So two things that the Holy Spirit has pinpointed, worship increases faith, and worship brings us into the presence of God. And the third one, worship is a weapon. Mostly what I sense he's highlighting right now is to move us into greater measures of worship because worship is weaponry to break through and to bring down the strongholds of the enemy. 
And one Sunday, I took particular note and wrote it down right away, something that Jerry rightly said. He said, it is the praise and worship that pushes out the darkness. Well spoken, Jerry. It is the praise and worship that pushes out the darkness. Worship should fix our eyes on Jesus and no one else. It comes from the heart, as Karen said last week. And once again in her book, Ruth Heflin says, David was also the Bible's most extravagant worshiper and celebrated warrior combined. The two are divinely connected. And we can read about David in 2 Samuel chapter 6. He was joyful, fully abandoned to God, and he didn't hold back in his worship. He was God-centered in his worship. Ruth Heflin goes on to say, There is nothing that will set demons to flight as worship does, for worship evokes God's presence. And I found this scripture verse last week that I was quite excited about. It's from the New American Standard Bible. 2 Chronicles 20, verses 18, 19, and 22. And it says, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites, from the sons of the Kohathites and the sons of the Korahites, stood up to praise the Lord of Israel with a very loud voice. Now listen here. It says, And when they began singing and praising, the Lord set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. I'm going to say that again. And when they began singing and praising, the Lord set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. I thought, wow. It was in the praise and worship that God was moved to subdue the enemy. So worship increases faith, brings us into the presence of God. Worship is a weapon. And the fourth one I want to share is worship helps position us for blessing and destiny. God has a call for us to press in and worship so that he can release what he intends for us. It's loving. It's in the loving, adoring, and glorifying the Father who is so worthy of our praise and worship that we come into a deeper place of humility and surrender. That positions us for what God wants to release, and it aligns us for destiny. Now, a few of you were here on October the 4th when I gave a message, and I talked about Jacob wrestling with God from Genesis 32, verses 24 to 30. And it says in verse 28, Then the man said, Your name will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and men and have overcome. So Jacob had to align with the Lord so that he could release his blessings and fulfill Jacob's destiny. It wasn't until Jacob was determined to get his blessing that he aligned and the blessing was released. So like Jacob, when we praise and worship, we align with God's agenda his purpose is for us. So we can be intentional to press in for deeper and higher levels of worship. And the fifth piece that I would like to talk about is how worship attracts the angelic realm. 
As the heavenly angels hear our praises, thanksgiving, and worship, they are drawn to us. It stirs up the Holy Spirit around us, and the angels actually come to participate. Has anyone here ever sensed the angelic realm here when we're worshiping? Yeah, many of us have. Some come on assignments as we declare the word of the Lord. And in Psalm 103, verse 20, out of the NIV, it says, Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. So as the angelic realm hears what comes into alignment with the Father, they come to perform the word of the Lord. So we must cooperate with the angels And together we move into our destinies as the angels come to see that we fulfill what is written in our heavenly books. So there, we have worship increases faith. It brings us into the presence of God. Worship is a weapon. It helps align us for our destiny. And it it brings, it attracts the angelic realm. And that, by any means, isn't exhaustive. That's just the five points that I felt the Lord lay on my heart for the message today. So we worship with the intention of loving the Father. We were made for worship, and he's waiting for our praises. He's wanting our worship so that he can align us for our destiny to to fulfill our purpose for his kingdom here on the earth. It's all about him and his will going forward. It's all about advancing the kingdom on the earth. So a, a week or so ago, I got an email out of the blue from my daughter. And she was talking and sharing about my little grandson. His name is Judah. And he's not yet a year old, but he was crawling under the glass coffee table, and then he's trying to stand up. And instantly, when I read that email, it just pricked my spirit, and I thought, Judah means praise. So when Judah goes under the structure, he keeps hitting his head on the glass ceiling, and he can't stand up. We need to remove any unseen structure that is hindering worship and let Judah arise. There's a call right now for any hindrances over worship to come off so that we can freely and fully surrender in childlike worship. So let the praise and worship arise. And Judy... uh, Karen had shared uh, a word that Judy had um, shared. She uh, spoke at last week about the childlike worship. And we know that childlike worship means being fully captivated by, by Jesus, fixed on him and nothing else, alone with him, loving him, in a secret place. It's like that first love where you're so captivated That's all you can think about. Head over heels in love and adoration. And it's that love that is expressed in the Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 9. And I'll read from the Passion. Jesus, the bridegroom king, says, I am overcome by merely a glance from your worshiping eyes. You have stolen my heart. I am overcome by merely a glance from your worshiping eyes. You have stolen my heart. In the tenderest, most loving sense, our worship touches our Lord's heart that much. On October the 21st, I read an article, and the title of the article is this. God is pouring out his rain and fire. Will you be his cup? 
and it was written by David Lebeau. And what he says in the article, he says, Where are the worshipers? The presence of Almighty God will begin to fall on his burning altars of worship. He's looking for the worshiper. He's looking for the worshiper, not necessarily the the teacher or the preacher, the prophet, the apostle, or the evangelist. He's looking for those who will worship in spirit and truth. And that comes from John 4, 23. We worship in song here at City Gate. We have people on the platform. We have instruments. We worship with music and in song. And song releases a sound. And we all know that sound causes movement. It causes vibrations in the air. It causes vibrations in our inner ear. So sound has movement. Movement comes with sound. And I know we're under restrictions right now during this COVID season, but as soon as we are able, let dance and flagging and movement go forth to bring the anointing. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So just as thanksgiving goes with praise, praise and thanksgiving, praise and thanksgiving, so surrender flows with worship. So let us enter in, in that childlike worship. And once again, I'll refer to Ruth Ward Heflin's book, Glory, Experiencing the Atmosphere of Heaven. She says, praise until the spirit of worship comes. Worship till the glory comes, then stand in the glory. So praise, worship till the glory comes, then stand in the glory. I just think that's so profound, so amazing. Praise till the spirit of worship comes. Worship till the glory comes, then stand in the glory. So I purposely made my message shorter. I would like the worship team to come back, and we're going to continue in worship. Not sure if I have the courage to do what I was going to do today. (laughs) So close your eyes and bow your heads, and listen and think about that song that goes like this. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take a cold Cleanse my lips, here I am. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Cleanse my lips, here I am. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. my lips here I am take a cold touch my